Before getting to the signal processing aspects of this video, I want to tell you a little bit about the EMG signal. EMG stands for electromyogram. The myo refers to muscle, and the gram is for measurement, and the electro, of course, is for electricity. When you want to move your body somehow or grasp an object, that's done through muscles, of course, and those muscles are moving because something in your brain is telling them to move. So there is an electrical signal that is generated in the brain. It travels down the spinal cord and that activates the muscles, for example, in your hand. Now, if you were to measure from two electrodes that are closely spaced to each other like this, you would get an electrical signal that looks like this, and this is called the EMG signal. The EMG is used for many purposes, one of which is to determine when a movement was initiated. So here you might see an EMG signal. You can see it's a little bit noisy. There's some slow drifts. There's some fast activity. And then here is the twitch of a muscle here. And then here's another small twitch. And here's, I don't know, let's call this a medium-sized twitch. So it's often of interest or, or clinical or scientific importance to determine exactly when a muscle was initiated. So that would be somewhere around here. Now, when you're doing this visually, it's often pretty easy to do because you just kind of look at it and you can spot when the onset happens. But for computer algorithms, it can sometimes be a little difficult to distinguish the background noise from the EMG signal of interest. And this is actually a pretty clean EMG signal. Sometimes it's really noisy. Sometimes the noise is about this magnitude. So then it can become really difficult to determine the difference between signal and noise. So one way to denoise these kinds of signals, not only EMG signals, but a general denoising strategy, is called the TKEO algorithm, which stands for the Tiger-Kaiser Energy Tracking Operator. Despite the really long name, it's actually a pretty straightforward algorithm. You set the new value, so each time point T in the filtered signal, or the new signal Y, is the current time point T of the original signal X squared minus the product, the multiplication, of the previous time point and the following time point. So square the current time point and subtract off the product of the previous time point and the following time point. And essentially what this is going to do is suppress a lot of the noise and make the signal even larger. Let's switch to MATLAB and I will show you what this looks like. Here's the data set that we'll be working with. It's one little time snippet of EMG data. So let's start by loading this in. And whenever you load in a new variable into the MATLAB workspace, it's always good to start off by looking at what's contained inside this MAT file. So you see there are three variables, fs, that's probably the frequency of sampling, so the sampling rate. And then we have a time vector, emg time, and the signal. So let's just start by plotting this. So I'll plot emg time by emg. This is the same signal that I just showed in the slide. And here on the x-axis, this is time in milliseconds. So this is one second here, from zero to one second. So. Here I initialize the filtered version of the signal to be the original signal. And here I loop through the, all the time points so you don't start at the first time point and you don't end at the last time point. And that's because you need to use the first and last time points for the filtering. So again, you're going to have a little bit of an edge effect just like I've mentioned in previous videos. In this case, the edge effect is only one data point in the beginning and one data point at the end, so it's no big deal. Anyway, so each time point i in the filtered signal is the ith time point in the data squared minus the product of the previous time point and the following time point. I wanted to write it out for you in a loop like this to make it really clear how this algorithm works. You can see it's very simple. However, it's better to avoid loops whenever possible in programming. So here I show the vectorized version, how to implement this formula using vectorization. So this is exactly the same as this. All right, so now I'm going to run this whole cell, which will also produce this filtered signal. Now the thing is that these two signals, the original EMG signal and the filtered EMG signal, these are no longer in exactly the same scale. The original scale is in microvolts, so this is 100 microvolts. 
but this is now the filtered signal is now in microvolt squared so it's uh, the total energy therefore to compare them on the same plot it's useful to convert them to a z-score where the z-score is defined as the signal minus the mean over the signal divided by the standard deviation of the signal now i'm not doing the z-scoring over the entire signal instead i'm just getting the mean and the standard deviation of the data before time zero. So the idea is that this is all a baseline activity here. And this is the kind of interesting part of the signal here. So I'm not Z normalizing the entire signal. I'm just Z normalizing using the pre zero time period as the mean and the standard deviation for the normalization. So here it's done for the original signal here. It's done for the filtered signal. So I'll run those lines of code. And here I do some plotting, so let's run this and we can look at it. So here again in blue you see the original signal. This is now the third time you've seen that signal. And here in pink you see the energy, so the TKEO result. Now in this case, this is not the z-score. This is just normalizing both signals according to their maximum. And that's really just another way of plotting them on the same graph. So it's pretty clear what happens with this pink signal. The baseline gets really flat, so all of this, what is noise here in the blue signal, the original signal, in the filtered version, it becomes almost a totally flat line. Let me even turn zoom on so we can look at this in a bit more detail. So this is the amount of noise in the, in the EMG signal, and the energy signal is pretty much flat here. So that already is really nice. You can imagine if you are writing an algorithm to detect a sharp change in a signal, it's going to be much easier to find a change in the pink signal compared to the blue signal. Now this one here shows the z-scored results. So it looks kind of similar to the top plot, but here you really see the difference in the signal to noise ratio of the TKEO energy signal versus the original EMG signal. So we can zoom in here a little bit. And you can see that the energy signal, the filtered signal, goes up to a z-score of 800. So that means it's 800 standard deviations greater than the pre-stimulus mean, or this yeah, baseline period here. And in contrast, the original signal goes up to yeah, somewhere in the order of maybe around 20. And this is for the big event. And if you look at these smaller events, you can see they're also going to be more easily detectable when this EMG signal has been converted into energy compared to the original signal.